And let me give a shout out to the rest of the creative team. Jonathan uh, uh, Glapion, Dave McCaig, and Tom Napolitano. Thanks for making it easy for me, guys. What's going on, everybody? Jem Mint here with today's new Comic Book Day reviews. It's Wednesday, March 23rd, and as always, going to go through this week's comics as spoiler-free as possible. And I think it was a pretty good week for comics. A lot of cool stuff. Speaking of cool stuff, I got to give a big shout out to the Daily Boot Ghoul on Instagram. I recently purchased three of their shirts, and I was a little hesitant at first because they're kind of on the expensive side, like $85 each. But they're these double-sided, all-over print, heavy cotton material. Uh, totally worth the price. I just wanted to give them a shout out and would we'll be rocking some of their stuff on the channel. Uh, it is Wednesday, so it is What Not Wednesday. I am going live today at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern for part two of my huge omnibus and collected edition sale. Got a lot of great stuff from our partners over at Organic Price Books. And uh, also, I'm having a live auction and claim sale on the channel this Friday, that's March 25th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Dynamite. Nick Barucci, actually give him a little preview of what you're going to bring to the auction. Everybody, this Friday, March 25th, 8.30 p.m., we are going to have a Dynamite Dynamic show on Gem Mint Collectibles. Check out some of what we're going to have. We will have Stray Dogs, DF Cover. Check it out. DF Cover. Gotta love it. 9.8 guaranteed. And it's a Gem Mint show. How can you not have a Gem Mint 10? We will also have some Vampirella. Check it out. We will have our commission cover art. Incredible Hulk. Green Arrow. Blade. The Child. Batman. And so much more. Plus... We will have metal covers. Check out that Vampirella with the Stray Dogs by Tony Fleeks. The boys are back and signed in silver. Thunderbolts, Peter David. Damsels, Joseph Michael Lindner, limited cover. Vampirella cosplay covers. Captain America signed by Jeff Loeb. And this is just a few of the books. Plus, we'll have our mega packs. One of them will be Iron Man with Iron Man number one CGC graded 9.8 Alex Ross cover. David Marquez. And this is number two of 39, signed. This is Greg Land, number two of 25. And the commission cover art as part of it. But we're not going to stop there. We are going to have some vintage books as part of the show. So you want to be here on Friday, and I'm going to stop before I drop any of them. So this Friday, March 25th, 8.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific. We're only going to be on for a few hours, and it's going to be on Gem Mint's YouTube channel. So check it out. See you there Friday. All right, Nick, thanks a lot. Hope to see you guys there. With that out the way, let's jump into the reviews, and let's start with DC. I meant to pick up this Rogues. I guess this is by Joshua Williamson. I forgot to put it on my pull list, but I'm going to double back and pick that up because I am interested to read that. I did read uh, Trial of the Amazon's Wonder Girl. This is issue one of two, a small little mini series within this DC event. Uh, picking up where the Yara Floor character left off with her little solo series and tying it into this whole death of Hippolyta and really giving us an origin of her tribe. She's not with the Themyscarian, she's with the Esquisitas, I think it was. Uh, I liked it. I liked the character. She's fun, lighthearted, kind of trying to, uh, you know, help figure out who killed Wonder Woman's mother. So interesting stuff there then we have the human target by tom king and greg smallwood this is issue number six i like this series a lot kind of threw us for a loop at the end of the last issue and they play on that here in this issue as well but i really liked it and uh, our main character kind of just figuring out that he's been with ice this whole time he's had a 12-day countdown maybe she's trying to make it uh distract him so he doesn't find who the killer was because maybe it was her so they do my boy Guy Gardner crazy dirty in here. If you thought the stuff with Martian Manhunter was crazy in the last issue, uh, they go there, this issue. I guess it's an Elseworlds tale, so anything goes. Moving on over, we have Robin, issue 12. This is by Joshua Williamson, Cruz, Ratman, and Guerrero. I'm really digging this series. This issue kind of wraps up that first arc, that whole tournament thing, and takes Damian Wayne into any direction that he wants to go now. I mean, we touch back in Gotham, kind of tells us it takes place in between uh, 
a little bit further back in canon on Detective Comics while Batman is still MIA, Robin touching ground, uh, playing with the idea of resurrecting Alfred. I don't want to get too much into it, but a really great series and a new uh, event kind of uh, sprawling out of this with this whole, what is it, Assassin's War or something with Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul's acting much differently. Talia wants to kind of do things the right way with Robin, so we'll see where it goes. It looks like this series is continuing, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and then we're going to move on over to Superman in Action Comics. And this is really the true Superman book. This is the Clark Kent book that's on the stands right now. I feel like it's underrated. I feel like I don't hear anyone talking about it. Broken Bonds, we're still doing this War World storyline versus Mongol. So I'm really digging that. I'm skipping the Martian Manhunter backstory, so I'm not reading that. But I'm digging the War World. It's like everything you would want out of a Superman in War World story. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And then we're going to end it off with Batman and Detective Comics, issue 1058 by Tamaki, Nahupan, and Bel Air. So uh, kind of wrapping up this Arkham, new Arkham Asylum arc, Batman is back. We kind of figure out, tying all the loose ends on what really went down and what went wrong with the new Asylum. So that was interesting. And then the last issue of House of Gotham. Kind of a tragic end to this kid that we have seen grow up in Gotham, coming full circle with him in the Penguin. Um, kind of deep, pretty interesting. Uh, I'm excited for Detective again. I do want to see where the next arc goes as we move on over to Marvel Comics. And we have Savage Spider Man issue two. This is by Kelly Sandoval, Nava, and Soda Mayor. So it's like what the cover is it's that nonstop Spider Man skewed, kind of frantic, fast paced storytelling with this version of Spider Man that is the man spider and just kind of this raw beast fighting type of issue so it was pretty fun in that sense but uh nothing too big story wise then we have ben riley spider-man issue three by d mateus baldion and silva and man the covers are really not my thing not digging the artwork on the cover but i did like this issue it felt like a true ben riley clone spider-man issue the end was uh so cool to see this character ripped from that 90s saga that i don't want to spoil for you guys so that was super cool to see kind of trying to guess who that character could have been this whole time was it chameleon was it uh mysterio who could be tormenting ben riley knowing all these things about him it's really what the ben riley asm book should have been in his own title but man not really digging the cover art there then we have maestro world war m issue number two by peter david peralta and abertov what can I say, man? Peter David gets the maestro, uh, created the maestro, and has fun with the character. He's a total badass. He'll whoop anyone's ass. We have this huge underground or underwater battle, I should say, with an old uh, Namor and his wife and child, which is super interesting. And he you know, unleashes the Kraken on maestro, but maestro is not such an easily beaten foe. Moving on over to the 10 Deaths of Wolverine, Issue 5. I guess this is the last issue. Benjamin Percy, Federico uh, Vincentini, and Dijo Lima. I liked it, man. We had the showdown between the Phalanx future Wolverine and the current Wolverine. Nice epic battle. Wrapping it up with the Moira McTaggart storyline here. I, I don't think we got a true conclusion to that. I don't know if I might have to double back and reread that. But uh, it was alright. I mean, leading into more X stuff. A lot of cool uh, solicits within these issues, including uh, a Donny Cates Hulk Thor uh, event that's going to happen. Moving on over here, we have Wolverine again, but as Patch with a new issue number one by Hama, DeVito, Underwood, and Chang. I'm all for it. I mean, nothing really happened. Wolverine and Madripoor as Patch. It was okay. Nothing big happened. No major characters. Kind of a lot of second string stringers or third stringers. But I'm down with, for the series to uh, see where it goes. Moving on over to Venom, Lethal Protector, which is why I wore this shirt. Uh, but this was a uh, Lethal Protector issue one by David Michelini, Fiorelli, and Valenza. Really throwing it back to those early Venom days, the Lethal Protector days. Telling us a dumb and fun 90s Venom story with D-list villains that he's up against. But one that just happens to have the power of sound manipulation and is able to kind of essentially hurt the symbiote which we know sound and fire can do so it was pretty uh interesting i'm down to go that route we have another venom ongoing by david michelini nothing wrong with that moving on over to the uh indies i think i only have image titles and we're going to start with this ghost cage this is by nick dragata and caleb golner so this was a black and white comic that read 
like a 90s manga. It felt like a it felt like I was reading something like Final Fantasy or something like that with this like everything is so intense, end of the world stuff, uh uh New Japan City from like uh Valiant type of scenario where there where there's an attack and there's this being on the cover, you can see this robot type of character that's supposed to be like the ultimate weapon to to fight back or what have you. They lost me on the story, not for nothing, but I liked the vibe, the tone, the art. It was very like a Dr. Robotnik main bad guy uh, <laughs> kind of head on a screen the whole time. It was pretty cool. Uh, then we have Department of Truth, issue number 17 by Tinian, Fornes, and Bidikar. Love this issue, man. This has to deal with President Nixon getting debriefed. He's the new president here. And he's got to meet the Department of Truth. We learn about the Department of Truth and then what the Soviets have, which is like the Bureau of Lies, which is like, you know, they're kind of yin to the yang kind of thing. And this big battle between America and Russia on who is the head country of the world by by belief, by making the people believe it, which we know is the backbone of this kind of Department of Truth storyline. So pretty uh, interesting, cool stuff. It wasn't an abstract issue artistically it was kind of straightforward which is pretty rare for department of truth but damn the the concepts are definitely still way out there moving on over to bolero by wyatt kennedy and luana vecchio so it's very much like the oa that show like i said this girl's traveling through multiverses different versions of herself having different relationships she's well written the author must have grabbed this personality out of themselves or somebody they know because it feels like a very real person and it flows and, and she's fun and it's it's got that kind of um, big multiverse aspect behind it as well. But it's more about the personal relationships. Um, it's all right. Not sure how much more they're going to get out of this concept and where they're going to go with it. Uh, but it's a fun series. Definitely adult themed. Uh, and then we're going to move on over to Saga, issue 57 by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughn. I, got, I think it's just me. I'm, not, I'm having a hard time getting back into Saga. Maybe because I really enjoyed the first half of it in collected edition, so I got to read them back to back. I'm feeling a little lost here. I get the whole kind of wanting to cut her wings off and not get checked because they're traveling and there's this whole thing going on. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just finding myself issue to issue on this new wave not really into it all right then we have gunslinger spawn we're on issue six by uh todd mcfarland and brett booth amazing issue i absolutely love where they're taking clown and how he's this own new villain kind of and violator and these little kind of robin crow batman who laughs pets uh pet clowns are surrounding him uh and and you think he's kind of got the upper hand with gunslinger being the weakest spawn and everything and and and, and you know trying to put him in a position to help clown uh, i like where where the story plays out i don't want to give it away because of spoilers but amazing artwork throughout this entire issue i mean you're dealing with two of the best in the business on this one baby and it was just a fun big bright spawn issue all right guys before i give you my pick of the week i mentioned we're going to go live this friday night at 8 30 p.m eastern with nick berucci and dynamite entertainment i do want to thank dynamite for also sponsoring this video i didn't get a chance to check out these titles but make sure to check out red sonia issue number seven and barbarella issue eight as the new releases from dynamite this week and now guys my pick of the week i'm going with we have demons this is published by dark horse is by scott snyder and greg capullo huge oversized issue and man you guys know and let me give a shout out to the rest of the creative team jonathan uh clap uh glapion dave mckaig and tom napolitano thanks for making it easy for me guys totally unexpected i just remember seeing the solicit for this and seeing oh yeah scott snyder great capullo i mean amazing let's pick it up and i love big heaven and hell stories and holy shit do we get the big bang and the births of angels and demons and this kind of story where a girl finds out that her recently deceased father was part of this demon hunting superhero team basically and we get all this backstory but it's dark and it's like you know big bang beginning of time kind of stuff and uh, onto this almost like underground men in black hunting down demons type of story artwork is amazing uh storyline is totally out there and i'm there for the ride doug issue one pick of the week excited to see where it goes and that's the new comic book day uh reviews for today let me know what your favorite comics were what your pick of the week was in the comments down below hope to see you guys later today on whatnot and this friday evening back on youtube for the auction and stay minty fresh peace